Hello dear students in today's problem based series question we are going to discuss a simple question followed by a few set of questions that can be asked in your exams so this is basically for the first year students so the question is going to be very simple so let's read the case history and see the questions followed by it so here they say a 16 year old girl presents to the opd with complaints of generalized weakness is there then fatigue is there then tiredness for the last two months here we have to note down the age is 16 years old so it could be the first event that is happening and it is just for the last two months she is not having any kind of long history so next what the doctor does is on examination he records paler so all of us know that paler is indicative of what kind of uh, disease or diagnosis then coilo nikia so this coilo nikia is a feature of the uh, spoon shaped type of nail and this is commonly seen in one type of disease and heart rate is of 110 beats per minute and blood pressure is 110 upon 70 and on examination of the respiratory system cranial nerve system central nerve system and the abdominal examination there were no significant findings so this is also important because some of the differential diagnosis of this particular case might have these abdominal examination findings also then the hemoglobin levels were found to be 10 gram per percentage or 10 gram per deciliter so this 10 is indicative that the hemoglobin levels are low and peripheral blood smear revealed a microcytic hypochromic blood picture it was seen that whenever they are planning to do a peripheral smear and in that the rbc's were looking like microcytic and hypochromic so this is classical feature of one type of diagnosis you can pause the video and give your diagnosis in the comment section and then come back and look at the answer for the correct answers. So now the following questions can be asked. These are some of the sample questions. So there is a separate section in your question paper that it is problem based series or problem based question and sometimes it is also referred as case based learning. So both of it can be a question can be asked like this. So what is your provisional diagnosis? Then enumerated laboratory test. So what are the laboratory tests that can help you to further confirm the diagnosis? Then they are asking why microcytic hypochromic picture is there in the above disease? And what is the treatment you would like to give the patient? And what is a reticulocyte response? By now the diagnosis should have been very clear. So let's start with the first question. What is your provisional diagnosis? So we will do a small discussion here regarding the provisional diagnosis. Here there are some classical features which is indicative of anemia so we know that the patient is having some type of anemia so why because the hemoglobin levels are low and the patient is having a paler and coelonychia and according to the peripheral blood mixture they have given microcytic hypochromia microcytic hypochromia and this is very classical and it is one of the most common types of anemia which is presented in india which is called as iron deficiency anemia iron deficiency anemia and iron deficiency anemia is the diagnosis here and why because we are having anemia which is of microcytic hypochromic picture sometimes the same microcytic hypochromic feature can be present in other diseases also so here i am going to write the differential diagnosis here so there are two common other diagnoses. There are multiple other diagnoses, but for first year, I would strongly suggest to go with this diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. Why? Because the question they are asking is straightforward and there are no extraordinary findings which are present in this patient. Suppose there, there could be a thalassemia. In thalassemia, what happens is the patient will have other features. This patient will have other features. This is a hemoglobin uh, disorder. The patient will have other features like jaundice which was not given in the history and they classically have hepatosplenomegaly also. So these are the other features which would be given in case of a thalassemia. So I would suggest if they ask a differential diagnosis you can go for thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease. In anemia of chronic disease also we can get a picture of microcytic hypochromic. So microcytic hypochromic can be in these three diseases. A few other also but most commonly in these three diseases and here there is no any other abnormal history or a long history which is suggestive of thalassemia or anemia of chronic disease. So the right answer would be here to go with an anemia that is iron deficiency anemia. So the provisional diagnosis would be iron deficiency anemia. Now let's go to the next question enumerate the laboratory test. 
a simple blood picture has been already done the peripheral blood smear other than this what else we can do we can do say take the levels of iron itself that is the serum iron can be taken and serum ferritin also can be taken so ferritin is just a storage form of iron so these two can be taken and these two are generally reduced in iron deficiency anemia and we can also do some other investigation like total iron binding capacity what is this tibc is total iron binding capacity and since the iron is not available to bind it more and more iron binding molecule will be produced and tibc is usually increased in iron deficiency anemia so to further confirm the diagnosis these tests can be added to the panel but just in case you are confident enough of the microcytic hypochromic picture you can go ahead for the treatment also then why microcytic hypochromic is seen in this above condition all of us know the rbcs in the pro erythrocyte or in the premature phases they are bigger so as and when they mature their size becomes reduced and in this one of the most important molecule which sits inside the rbc and gives volume to the rbc that is nothing but the hemoglobin so now what has happened the iron is not available so adequate hemoglobin is not present in the rbc so naturally the volume of the rbc is shrunken so this type of shrunken cell is called as microcytic then why hypochromic hypochromic means the color is less it is very simple why because the hemoglobin is the one which is giving red color to the rbcs since the hemoglobin levels are decreased it is also going to be hypochromic so we will try to discuss in a case of a macrocytic anemia also where the size of the rbcs will be bigger and there are some differential diagnosis for it so here this that it is microcytic because the volume of the rbcs is not having adequate hemoglobin so it is smaller and hypochromic because the hemoglobin levels are less and now coming to the next question what is the treatment you would like to give this patient and iron deficiency anemia it is very common in india but at the same time one of the advantage that it has is it is easier to treat also so the, we have treatment options it can be an oral drug that is oral iron therapy like an iron sulfate can be given and generally the treatment is given for a longer duration maybe 3 months 100 days something like that or a parenteral parenteral means you are giving going to give in an iv formulation Uh, if we need an immediate result and the oral drugs are not tolerated by the patient then you can go in for parenteral drugs like iron dextrin or iron sucrose generally sometimes we see this type of iron deficiency anemia during the time of pregnancy also and if the delivery is scheduled in a short span of time then we might have to increase the iron levels hemoglobin levels at the earliest possible and their blood transfusion can be helpful but this girl has come to us for 16 years so generally an oral and parenteral therapy should be sufficient and her levels are not very low if it is very low then we might consider a transfusion of blood to increase the hemoglobin immediately but this is good enough for this particular patient and what is reticulocyte response all of you by this time you would be knowing that rbc whenever they are starting they are in a bigger stage size that's what i told you just now and as and when they are coming down they have just the penultimate step one step before the formation of rbc that is the reticulocyte the reticulocyte and this reticulocyte is generally released into the blood this is generally released into the blood and after that it matures into a mature rbc now what we have done is we have given an iron therapy so this process is becoming faster so what is happening more and more reticulocytes are being released from the bone marrow and they are reaching the blood so what is the advantage of this is instead of doing the rbc count which might take a little longer or the hemoglobin levels which might take a little longer to show up in the reports for example this girl has come with 10 g per cent to increase it to 11 g per cent the iron therapy we have started but we are not sure that whether therapy is working or not and usually the hemoglobin levels tend to increase after a period of 10 to 14 days only so it takes a longer duration to assess our treatment so instead of that what we can do is we can do a reticulocyte count so initially you have done a reticulocyte count and let's say it is coming around 1 percentage 
and after therapy after giving a therapy you assess the reticulocyte count why because this reticulocyte response or the reticulocyte number increases within a span of 5 to 7 days itself so it is faster to show up in the test so if it is increasing let's say from 1 percentage it has gone to 2 percentage or let's say 1.5 percentage something like that it means that you are going in the right direction and your therapy is working so this will help us to assess the treatment progress and as well as to check whether the treatment given is working or not so that is what the reticulocyte response is for and it is wonderful to check it for an immediate response so these are the following questions that can be asked and sometimes the problem based question i have seen a lot of times like they will ask the general theoretical question for example what are the stages of erythropoiesis and what are the other uh, other parameters that you can uh, look at in the black picture which will indicate the differential diagnosis so all these things can be asked in multiple questions can be asked so these are the few question samples i have discussed with you guys i hope it's helpful for your studies thank you for watching the video we'll see you in the next video thank you so much